What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 34 and we're starting today's episode off by offering Jose Pozo another contract. Uh, the Manchester City winger looks like he is on our way, on his way, sorry, to our club for £90,000, which is a crazy steal to be honest. But of course he seems like he wants a really good squad status, which he's probably not going to get, which is kind of frustrating, but you know, what can you do? And uh, also a training injury, Marion Schwarzer is going to miss the start of the season. He's out for two weeks. Not a real blow he's a left back 61 overall doesn't really do too much for us so we don't mind that too much and also Granada have rejected another bid for Ruben Blanco now as I mentioned before Blanco as you can see by the chief executive comments there he does seem like a future star I don't know what his potential would be I would imagine it's mid to high 70s 21 years old 68 overall so you've got to imagine you're probably paying about 2 to 2.5 million pounds minimum for a goalkeeper of that ability already who clearly does have potential so yeah I, I don't really know about that deal like I, I do want to pull it off it is the one signing I want to make you know but I'm just I'm not too sure whether I want to spend between three to four million pounds because that is probably what we'll end up having to fork out if we do get a bit accepted because Granada they don't seem like they're in a rush to sell him and whenever a club is like that it usually takes quite a bit to prize away one of their youngsters but uh, still we have a squad report as we enter uh, August so the first squad report of the season you can see uh, the signings we made so far and how the team is looking also Madran we offer him a contract again and again Jose Poser declined his contract so another decline for Jose Poser it seems like this guy just doesn't want to come to the club unless we give him crucial first team player status which is unbelievably frustrating because Madran probably will go straight into our first team but Jose Pozo very doubtful you know our attacking lineup is very very decent and he's only 65 overall so I'd imagine he'll probably be on the bench or possibly even in the reserve. So to give him crucial first team player status will upset him when he's not on the team sheet week in, week out. But what can you do? Still, we had our third preseason friendly against QPR. We lost it, but again, we rested the entire team, so it didn't really matter. And also, Granada once again rejected a bid for Ruben Blanco. They just don't want to seem to let go of the young goalkeeper, which is really frustrating because, as you can tell by the chief executive comments there, £2.3 million to £3.7 is what we'll probably have to fork out, which for a goalkeeper valued at £600,000 okay I take the point that he's going to grow and you know he will probably be valued more than that in a few seasons time it's still quite a lot to pay for a player who's still at the moment only 68 overall still Madran's going to come in and so is Jose Pozo so two more cheap signings arrive here at El Sardinero gotta love that both players look very decent indeed Madran is a 69 overall midfielder Jose Pozo is a 65 overall winger as you can see both the players we got are under the value for what we paid 20 and 22 years old respectively look at those passing stats from Madran very nice indeed so yeah two good signings there again you know both of those players are not going to set the world alight they're not going to have potential to be the next you know 85 plus rated players in this team but they're certainly decent squad players if nothing else so very happy to get them both under their valuation and I'll take those deals all day long also putting a new bid for Oyer because I'm still not sure whether I want to sign him or not but I do want to sign a new goalkeeper regardless and also a bid for Grimaldo as well. Would love to get this left back from Barcelona B but as you can see by the chief executive once again it seems like we're going to have to pay a big premium to get one of the youngsters there who clearly does have potential. So it's, it's always frustrating when that happens but you've got to expect that in this year's career mode. It is more realistic to have a player, uh, to have a club hold you to ransom over their one of their young stars. It is more realistic so I guess that's kind of a good thing. But uh, Jute Paulik is on his way to Exeter City on loan for a season which I'm okay with. Uh, the right midfielder out of academy wasn't going to play too many games this year so it's good deal get some first team football and we also put in a bid for Alvaro Vadio of Real Batiste as well 21 years old 75 overall looks very good indeed and we'll wait and see what Batiste say we uh, then see that uh, Ruben Blanco Granada said they wanted 3.6 million pounds for him so I was sitting there and I was like, do you know what? He is the goalkeeper I really want. He is my number one signing for this window, other than Buena Castle, of course, we've already got. So I put in a bit of £3 million and we'll wait and see what they say. I know it's going to be a huge overspend. Of course, you've got to take the point that, obviously, he will grow and will probably be end up ending up you know, worth more than £3 million. At least you'd certainly expect so. But it's still quite a lot to pay right now. So I'm, I'm still not sure about that one. Also, putting a new bid for Oyer, but again, I don't know what his overall is. He could end up 
up being worse than Ruben Blanco and even Pacheco in that team. I don't really know what his overall is, to be honest. It could be a 60 or a 70. I don't know, but uh, still putting a bit for Danny Pacheco. So many of you have been recommending me this guy, and I would like to sign him because I know that the former Liverpool man is a very decent player on the game. As you can see, 73 overall, 25 years old, probably could grow a couple more ratings as well, but I'm not too sure if we'll be able to pick him up or not. Also, Barcelona B once again reject the bid for Grimaldo. As you can see, the chief executive says that we're probably going to have to pay between 3.6 to 5.8 million pounds. That's pretty much going to be, you know, at least uh, two thirds of our budget, you know, when you consider the wages as well. So I don't really know whether that deal is going to come off. Also, uh, De Tomas at Real Madrid uh, put a bit of 400,000 pounds for him, but he's on 25 grand a week. Not sure I want to pay that for a backup striker week in, week out. So that deal is probably not going to get off the ground. And also Christian Sebalos at Spurs as well. He's valued at £775,000, but he is on the transfer list. We put in a bit of 400000 and we wait and see what they say. As you can see, Batiste did reject the bid we put in for Vidio. They want £4.5 million, and Granada want £1.7 million for Oya. So, I don't know. That, that deal is probably not going to happen, because, again, I don't know enough about him, and I don't want to make a signing which turns out to be even worse than the goalkeeper we currently have. So, that deal is probably not going to get off the ground. And also, Batiste weren't happy with a bid for Danny Pacheco. Doesn't look like they want to get rid of their guy at all, to be honest. He's a crucial first-team player in their team. He's just signed a new five-year deal. As you can see, chief executive, 4.5 to 6.5. Not really prepared to pay that. 73 overall is very good, but it's still a bit of an overspend for a guy who, you know, could be first-team for a first, uh, for the first couple of seasons, and then would probably drop down the pecking order. Uh, putting a new bid for Ruben Blanco. Granada just won't let go of the young goalkeeper. We put in a bit of 3.3 million pounds, though, and we'll wait and see what they say. I know it's a huge overspend. But again, just just try and think about the future, the future evaluation of him. That will go up massively once he does begin to finally grow. And also as well, uh, Spurs rejected a bit for Christian Sebola, so I said, Do you know what, forget about it. We just signed Jose Pozo, so I'm not bothered. But here is the team right now. This is how I've got it set up for the first game. We're playing a 4-5-1. We do, funnily enough, take on Granada here, the side who we're trying to poach two goalkeepers from. And as you can see by my team, this is probably what I'll be running with uh, for the majority of the season. Although Schwartz will most likely play left back ahead of Delgado, one of our pre-contract signings, but as we do take on Granada here away from home for the first game of the season as you can see, uh, no Oya not in the team at all, and Ruben Blanco was on the bench with Roberto starting so I was wondering how good those two goalkeepers must be of their second and third choice respectively but uh, still, we do take on Granada as you can see by my team, pretty strong I felt, you know, we have made some very good changes coming into the new season, quite a few new signings, so I was really excited for the game, and the first chance would fall just 27 minutes in, and it would go to Granada as Rico plays the ball forward towards Fernandel here. Fernandel plays it back inside towards Rico and the first chance goes to Granada and the first goal goes to them as well. The home team take the lead, the captain grabbing the goal and there's nothing that our new goalkeeper Pacheco could do about it really. It's a fantastic strike by Fran Rico. It goes right into the far corner. Our goalkeeper was never getting to it and it is 1-0 to the home side. So the worst possible start to the new season. Really frustrated about that but nothing I could really do once they got themselves inside. But in the 33rd minute, we had a great chance to equalise pretty much instantly. Keiko rolling the ball through towards Buena Casa here, and unfortunately for us, I fluffed his lines there as I went through one-on-one. -on -one. Really good chance there for the guy who's now signing a permanent contract here at Racing Santander, but the shot went wide in the post. But from the goal kick here, Granada pass out from the back, and eventually as Keiko wins the ball back off Larson here, he plays it inside towards Buena Casa. Buena Casa turns his man and finds Ander Keiper down the right-hand side. Fake shots around Martins, keeps on going, crosses the ball in. Buena Casa has a free header. He missed a good chance just a few seconds ago, but if you give Buena Casa a free header six yards out, the number nine is going to put the ball in the back of the net nine times out of ten, and that is one of those nine times. Lovely ball by Ander Caper, obviously making his debut in this game. First assist for him, and a lovely header by Buena Casa. Cushions it into that side of the goal, and it is Granada 1, harassing Santander 1. So in his third debut for the club, he gets his first goal of the season and makes it 1-1. In the 50th minute, we went close from a free kick there, and just a few minutes later, we came forward again with uh, Keiko back here, lit towards Alvaro Madran. Back to Keiko inside towards Buena Casa here. Buena Casa offloads it to Keiko and carries on his run. Keiko plays it back to him. Buena Casa turns to last man Martins, shoots and scores, pokes it into the bottom corner. Sergio Buena Casa gets his second goal of the game, turns the game on its head himself, makes it Granada 1, Racing Santander 2, and as you'll see, we do end up winning the game by two goals to one, as nothing really happens. 
happen after that. So we've made a lot of signings, loads of new deals, loads of players coming in, but I'm so glad that my main transfer target this year, which was Sergio Buena Casa, coming back to the club, hopefully on a permanent deal, which we have done so, got those two goals to turn again on its head. What a bargain he could be for £170,000. But as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, please leave a like, and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.